to God, my exceeding joy. You are the word to me, to God, my exceeding joy. Oh, you are.
woman and I, I don't want that air. I want everyone to settle down. John 8 32. Are we there? Can we read it together on I want to go? What makes free? I can't hear you now. What makes free? Deliverance is by the truth. And nothing else. When I came to the Lord, I had several issues. I had several struggles. Things I was struggling with. And one of them was my inability to tolerate nonsense from people who show off.
Amen. Help me say to your neighbor, I am no longer my worst enemy. I can't hear you. Say, say to someone else. I, I, I don't like the way the others look. Come on, come on. Say it to yourself now. It is often said that we are our worst enemies. I think that that is correct. Amen. And it is one great dimension that the enemy has consistently deployed to do us great damage. Over and again. Is it because the children are here that I'm hearing that? Okay. So until we stop being our worst enemy. Say with me, I'm going to stop right now. Until we stop being our own worst enemy and start impacting each other positively. To say that we should go out to impact the world is merely idealistic. It's mouth talk. Amen? For after all, what do we say about charity? Come on now, talk to me. Charity does what? If we must make impact, it's going to start at home. And if we haven't impacted ourselves at home, and we go about this amount of making impact, we're wasting our time. There are six points, depending on how the time goes. I may take the six or just five and leave the balance out for the next time that I want to share with you that will help us stop being our own worst enemy, make impact in each other's life, both in this church, in our homes, wherever God has placed us. And then from there we can move forward to make impact in our world and in our generation. Amen? The first point. Lack of honor for your pastors. Say with me, lack of honor for my pastors. A rough word, beloved, can destroy like a sword stabbing through the heart. But a wise, uplifting word can suit the spirit and bring peace and smile. Is there anyone here that has seen God face to face before in the house? Can you wave your hand to me? Pastor, may I have seen God face to face? I'm, I'm checking through. I'm checking through. Okay. Nobody has ever seen God before in this house, at least. We used to have one brother here who told me he has seen Jesus three times. I look at him. I say, This one, you. I didn't say that to him in my heart. I say, This one three times you cannot encounter Jesus face to face and not die and I've, I've seen him several times that is, he is so alive he's so alive so you know when, when Jesus walked into my room saying Praise God. Not many of us here have ever seen God face to face. Even though he is in us, he is with us, and he is upon us and over us. Am I correct? Regularly, God sends to us to bless us our, our pastors. 
Am I correct? Our pastors and the men of God that they bring prayerfully to bless us again and again in this local assembly. You know, sometimes we preach and we preach to all of Christianity today. I'm talking to you. I'm not preaching. So God sends me, these men and women of God and the various people will bring to bless you daily. And sometimes you may not even know that we are blessing you because you are not there with us. But in our prayer closets, I know how many times God had brought faces and names to me. And I don't even know what they are going through. And I tried to know Lord, what, and he said, just pray in the spirit for them. And 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm praying for the same thing. I'm praying just in the spirit for them until the body is taken away. I am blessing you without you knowing. And it's so for all the other men of God. So, we have a responsibility to God to bless you. Amen. Our responsibility as your pastors is to bless you, not to curse you, not to, you know, um, bring you under guilt and condemnation. No. Ours is to encourage you, to empower you, to, you know, be there for you. It's called blessing. When you're down, when you're confused. When you feel abandoned by everyone else, your pastors are here. We are here to bless you. Now, if we do not do it, we fail God. Someone hear what I'm saying? We fail God. And not necessarily you. So we are not doing it because of you. We are doing it because a dispensation has been placed upon us to bless you. And who will betide us if we fail in that? We will answer to God that when we have a mandate to bless, we're cursed. When we have a mandate to lift up, we're discouraged. Someone with me here. That's our responsibility. What is your responsibility? Mm. Hello? You have the responsibility to accept the blessing that will speak over you. For a gift not received is rejected. It cannot bless. Am I correct? Until you have received a gift, you cannot enjoy it. Am I correct? So your responsibility is to receive the blessing that we release over you. And you know, because we are spiritual, we do not see, but we believe. And when we believe, it becomes. Is someone with me here? God's responsibility is to perform our blessings that we release upon you. You see, it's a chapter dimensional arrangement. Ours is to bless, yours is to receive, God's is to perform. If we do not bless, you will have nothing to receive. If you do not receive, God has nothing to perform. So we work together as a team. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 44 verse 26 The Bible says He confirms the words of his servants And does what? Performs the counsel Of his messengers It is his responsibility Now By daily being Thus impacted And empowered By the blessing of God which we speak upon you, which you receive, which God performs, we ought to, as a church, everyone in this place, 
We ought to walk in victory and in unending glory. So where challenges arise, where difficulties come, beloved, by reason of the blessing that we speak upon you, by reason of the fact that you have received that blessing, and by reason of the fact that God is in the performance of that blessing, you should not go down. So no matter what the enemy brings your way, your way is up, not down. Am I talking to someone? Your way is what? Up, not down. Perpetual victory and unending glory. That is what it ought to be. But it is not so. Am I correct? Hello, can we be... Am I correct that that is not so? So what is the problem? Hmm. Listen to me. As you open to Matthew chapter 10, 41, I want you to tell your neighbor, stop cursing your pastors. Stop cursing your blessings. I can't hear you say that. Can you talk to someone? Stop cursing your pastors. Stop cursing your blessings. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Can we read that together? Are you there? Matthew 10, 41. Quickly, let's read it together. So that some of you struggling with sleep, sleep will let you alone. When you talk, you know, sleep goes away. Can we read it together? I want to go. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Say with me, Lord, may that be my portion. Now the word says if you honor a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. What does that mean? There are ten rewards that the prophet enjoys but i'll tell you one of them only because we don't have time one of them is answer to prayers god always answers the prayers of his prophets the answer may not be what you expect but he answers he never keeps quiet over the desires expressed by his prophets something is going to happen now Praise God. The Lord is just whispering to me. Someone with pain in the pelvic area has just been healed. So let's remain sensitive, please. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 to 17, we, we won't read that. You, that is the story of the Shunammite woman. The story of who? You remember that story? She fed and took care of the prophet Elisha. What was the end of that story? God blessed her with a son. Was that her prayer point? Come on, talk to me now. Was that her request? Was it her desire? The man of God called her. Come, come. Uh... How many of us remember his PA? 419 boy. Call me that woman. And she came. I said, ask her. You know, the prophet was strange. He, he called for the woman and did not talk to the woman. Have you read that story before? Go to your Bible and look. He called for the woman and did not talk to the woman. He asked Gehazi, what, what does she want? Does she want me to talk to the king? Then she answered, I'm amongst my people. I'm connected. Hello? That's what that means. I'm connected. I can reach the king anytime I want. Then Gezi said she does not have 
Hello. What did the prophet say? By this time, my goodness. How that blessing will come upon someone that they didn't ask for. I see God locating you with a blessing. A blessing you have not even thought of. Will locate your life and turn your circumstances around. In the name of Jesus. And the man pronounced, by this time next year, you will have a baby boy. He was not confused about the sex. And it was so. Praise God. That is what happens. That is what happens. Now, the man of God did not go around saying, in whose house can I stay? Who will make a way for me to be in there? No. He usually passes through that um, village. Anytime he's going on his rounds to the prophetic schools in Israel, he will pass through that city, pass through that. And she kept observing that this man of God keeps. So one day she went to her husband and she said to him, Honey, I think that we need to make room in our house for this man of God. So that when he is passing here next time, he will not have to because she must have seen him one day. He came late to the village and it was getting late and he was hurrying away. Say, no, this man does not need to do this. When he gets here, let him relax. Rest, have something to eat and go on his journey. So she provided a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp. She made room in our house and our home for him and she will serve the man hello please hear me until you come to a place where you appreciate someone's appreciate what god has given to you you have abused it until you appropriately value us as your pastors you cannot truly honor us and unless you honor us we cannot truly bless you for it is what you value and honor that can bless you am i making sense to you hello it is what you value and honor that can do what bless you so do yourself some favor, beloved, and honor the men of God, the women of God that God had placed over you. It is not for them. It is for you. When we say a prophet, somebody will say, well, are you a prophet? What is it? Are you not an apostle? When did you become a prophet? I am not by title, by office, a prophet. But the word prophet stands for a servant of the Most High God. Hello? How many prophetic declarations did Abraham make? In the whole Bible. And yet God referred to him what? As my prophet. Are you still with me now? Tell your neighbor, don't be in a hurry. We are still in the introduction. This is point one. I warned on Wednesday that everybody should have breakfast before they come. Because these matters are so important. If you come with me and understand what I'm saying, your deliverance is here. I say your deliverance is here. In the name of Jesus. You see, it has come to me as a pain for you to come to church with sickness in your body. And walk out of these doors with the same sickness. It's a taboo. It should never be so. You come oppressed and you go back oppressed. It should never be so. You come here hassled and you go back with the same hassle. Tormented and you go back with the same torment. Then you didn't come to church. Then church is a social club. Then there is no God. Because if there is God, my God is a healing God. He's a miracle working God. He's a powerful God that can sort you out. That it is not happening is my pain for 21 days I asked God many probing questions do you know the prayer points I pray one prayer point 21 days 
the rest, I was just asking him questions to explain. One prayer point. Just one prayer point. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and power and grace me to walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That was my only prayer point. 21 days. I don't want money. I'm not looking for a crowd. I'm not looking for anything. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost and power and grace me to walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hours. Hours on my face on the floor. Sitting down on the bed. In that confinement. Crying to him from heart. Tears flow in my eyes. But I ask him probing questions. Lord, why are you not blessing my people? Why are they not prospering? What is the problem? Is it my sin that I don't know of? Is it the sin of my wife? Or is some witch standing against me? And he smiled. Son, you know, your sins have been forgiven. Your wife's sins have been forgiven. As for witches, you are more than them. So the problem is not any of that. But take these words, speak to your people as a father would to his sons and daughters. We've been our own worst enemy. We've been our own worst enemy. So I want it to come to an end. If you don't value me, if you don't value these ones that God had placed his hands upon here with me to watch over you, you frustrate the grace of God in the house. Because it is only the things that you value that can bless you. Many people have spoken over my life. Young Gicho, I traveled all the way to South Korea. I met with him, prayed for me, made prophetic declarations over my life. Ohedekpo, Michael Konkwo, Chuck Pierce, my mentor, Prophet Kure, great men of God, Mao Pai, when he came here to bless us. And of course, not the least, my father in the Lord, a general overseer, Pastor Waladi Farasi, daily pouring themselves over upon me. And you know what? From time to time, I remember that I need to activate those prophetic words. So what do I do? I lay on my face and I begin to bless them in my prayer. I begin to bless them. I begin to pray for them. I pray for their families. I pray for their ministries. I pray, bless them. Bless them, Lord. I, I, I go into all kinds of things. I enter into warfare on their behalf. Everything that is against them is against my destiny. Because until their words are fulfilled in my life, nothing must happen to them. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I do. And as I do that, I'm activating the blessings they have spoken over my life. Activate the blessings that are spoken over my life. Beloved. When you bless the people who regularly prophesy over your life. When you bless the people who regularly bless you. You are activating the words of blessings that they have spoken over you. 
Now, I know that many of us are suffering from what we call spiritual ignorance. Some things stand over you. They don't rest on you. Because our God is a God of season, He's a God of time. Some things will never happen now, no matter how much you ask for them. I, was, I don't know who I was sharing with. I said, hey, some of us in this place, God give us one million dollars. Church close. Am I correct? Suddenly we will arrive. You know, you know, our English will change. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't like that type of thing. Now he can talk to me like that. Shut up. Ordinary one million dollars. <laughs> your, your head will spin. Do you understand what I'm saying? For, listen to me. If some of the things I have prayed for in the past had happened, I wouldn't be looking for God now. I'll be too busy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll, I'll be too busy. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be all over the place. Invitations will come from left, right, and center. Do you, know, do you understand what I'm saying? Now, but God will wait me. He will wait me to build me. And when I am sure-footed, he will then and 